Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about distortion in your photos, in your smartphone photos in particular, different types of uh, distortion. There's five most common types of distortion. We're going to cover those. Barrel distortion, pin cushion distortion, lens type distortion, perspective distortion being the subject distance, and also the other perspective distortion being angles. If you're listening to this on the podcast, remember you can join me on YouTube where I talk to you live in the camera and also on the website smartphonephotographytraining.com forward slash tutorials, you'll be able to find episodes like this one where you'll also find previous one, perspective distortion angles. We covered that previously and I showed you what causes that. I'll touch on it again, but I showed you how to fix that using an app called Snapseed, free Google app. It's fantastic on all devices. So with that, let's play the intro. So the big question is this, how do smartphone photo enthusiasts like us become that creative and confident photographer we desire and deserve to be, creating those beautiful, impactful photos? This podcast will give you the answers. I'm Mike, and welcome to the Smartphone Photography Club. Alrighty, so the app I'm going to show you how to fix most of these distortions is an app called Screwit. It is S-K-R-W-T. It's available on Android and iPhone on the App Store or the Google Play. So if you have, have access to either of those to download your apps, you can access this for less than the price of a cup of coffee. If you're like me, that's a serious question. Will I, would I give up a coffee? No, you, it's just one less coffee to get this app. I would do that because it's an amazing app. It, uh, it gets rid of that barrel and pin cushion distortion really well. There's no other app that I've found out there that does as good a job. So different types of distortion. Covered on that, distortion is one of those photo imperfections caused by either your lens choice or your capture perspective or angle that you've used. Smartphone lens attachments can also affect the amount of distortion, either in, unintentional or or deliberate. And I'll talk about that. Deliberate, you could you could actually you might actually like the distorted the bending walls and the fisheye lens the, the attachment that you can get. So for creativity, it can be really good because it, it adds a bit of motion and movement to the photo and, and draws you in so um, and, and, and brings you straight to the center of the photo. So that can be really good and you might want to further emphasize that using an app like Screwit. So five different types I touched on. Barrel distortion. So this is where, this is where straight lines in the photo and I'll use the example of interior photos because I work with property managers, real estate photography and where they don't have the capacity to hire a professional real estate photographer so they take the photos themselves. And you'll see those on sites like realestate.com.au is a perfect example. It's visual heavy when you search for a property to rent. First thing that comes up is the photos. You search by, by the, using the map. The first thing that pops up is the photo. So it's, it's very, very visual. So barrel distortion is one of those ones where you go, ah, okay, that one was captured on a smartphone. <laughs> so that's why I work with property managers to do that. Now, barrel is where the walls start to bend outward from the center, okay? And you've seen that with, with many photos. It's typical in wide angle lens cameras, and our smartphone is a wide angle lens, is the main camera is a wide angle lens. It takes in a wide field of view similar to what we see with our eye. And what happens is it tries to squeeze that information onto a certain size photo image sensor. That's why, uh, and it does an amazing job just using the normal camera in the, in the, in the, uh, in the phone because it matches and it has um, image distortion adjustments. It does it all automatically. The computational photography, it's, it's incredible. If you go and attach a wide angle lens, then all of a sudden it doesn't know because now it's got all that extra information and tries to squeeze it in there. The other type is pin cushion distortion. So this is where straight lines in the photo bend inwards from the, from the edges. And this is where typical of uh, uh, if you put a long lens attachment on your phone. So I have here, for those watching, I have a 21 times zoom lens. It's quite big. Um, <laughs> it, it works really well if you have that completely stabilized in a, on a tripod. And uh, if you can just uh, not be too concerned about the edges of the frame being being out of focus and darkened and uh, and just the center of the photo being in focus, then these, these are fantastic. But they do also introduce that pin cushion distortion. And also you, early model smartphones, um, GoPros, sorry, GoPros, your action cams, a lot of those had that type of distortion as well. Even though 
I'll just go back for a sec. Even though smartphones have these wide angle lenses in, they are corrected, as I touched on, with uh, computational distortion correction. There are some apps out there. There's one, there's two that I know of, Moment. They sell the Moment lenses. They have an app as well. So in the app, if you use their camera replacement feature of their app, you can actually say, hey, I'm using this particular Moment lens and it will go and apply even more uh, distortion correction to take in all the extra distortion caused by that lens. Another one that's that's not product specific, but it's called Filmic Pro. It's more for video. It will actually de-squeeze the video captured. They do have they have partnered with a couple of lenses, so you can say this is the lens I'm using, or you could just say I'm, I have attached a lens. So that's fantastic. Lens type distortion, there's uh, rectilinear lenses, which are the fixed zoom wide angle lenses. They make lines and the photo appear straight. Then, and then there's the curvy linear lens, like the fisheye lenses that unashamedly <laughs> really emphasizes that, that bending uh, straight lines. Perspective distortion, subject distance, let's cover that one. So you've seen those photos where the Eiffel Tower is way in the distance and then you've taken a photo of, someone's taken a photo of a person there with a hand out and it looks like they're holding the Eiffel Tower in their hand. That's because objects that are further away look smaller and objects that are closer look bigger. So that's a distortion that, that happens there. And no doubt you've, you've seen an amazing sunset. You pick up the phone and you go, oh, I need to take a photo of this and, and, and the sunset looks tiny and it's, it's nowhere near as good. That's where you can use the uh, two times teleconverter built into your most smartphones. Now they have multi lenses, so use one of those options or a zoom lens. Um, you might read a lot of people suggesting in articles that wide angle uh, lenses are no good for portraits because it will actually uh, make the ears look smaller and wrap further around the head and the nose look bigger. And to, a, to an extent that's true because a wide angle lens, to fill the frame, you have to get in nice and close. And as you move further back, you can use that t two times option on, on most smartphones now and stand further back and that uses a different different lens and it doesn't have the same um, perspective distortion. You've probably seen those GIFs and they look amazing where photographers have gone and changed their lenses from a super wide right through to a, a long telephoto zoom and each time they change the lens you can see the person's face completely change or their facial features move and expand and get smaller and all that sort of thing. But each time they change a lens, they're stepping further and further away. And that's that's what's causing most of those that perspective distortion. The other one is, the last one is angle perspective distortion. And then I'll get into this app and show you how to fix those other pin cushion and barrel distortions. The perspective distortion is angles. So this is where you, if you stand relatively close to a building, you'll notice that the, the bottom of the building is quite large. And that as you look up the top of the building, it'll taper in and get more narrow. That happens even standing further back and you're taking a cityscape, you'll still see the buildings aren't quite uh, straight, the, the sides of the buildings. So we can fix that in uh, using Snapseed. I touched on that earlier. Perspective tool inside Snapseed is fantastic for stretching either the top or the bottom of the photo and stretching it out, stretching all those pixels and bringing stuff in and it'll actually uh, does an amazing job making it, bring it back to exactly authentic of what your eye saw at the time of capture. That said, there's also a process called keystoning where you you actually want to do that. You actually want to get in close to, the, to an object and then tilt the camera upwards and that will actually further emphasize that tapering of narrowing at the top of the building so it can make it actually look really super huge. Another capture technique indoors, I suggest to property managers when they're taking interior photos or interior designers, what you do is uh, have a good quality wide angle lens like the cinematic range, the Struman Optics. They have a um, wide angle that, that's fantastic, has no blurring at the edges and, uh, and nice straight walls. But what you need to do is capture the photo or hold your, your smartphone directly in the middle between the floor and the ceiling. And that gets rid of the angle um, just perspective issues and then keystoning, it gets rid of all that and then shooting directly um, across the room towards the corner of the, the, the room is the best way you can take in as much as you can and keep those, those walls nice and straight. It's also important when there's not just walls, but there's doorways and windows. And uh, yes, that's the best way of doing it. All right, 
let's get into this app called Screw It. I'll share my screen here and bring it up for you. Okay, so this is a fisheye lens that I've brought up on the screen here. Like I said, unashamedly distorted, but because it's completely really over the top emphasized, this is gonna be a great example to show you what's going on. So we tap on the on the preset there, and then you've got here, mobile, wide, fisheye, GoPro. It's just a way of starting, so I'm gonna go with fisheye. And then as we move the uh, slider at the bottom there, we can actually uh, go to a negative value or a positive value. So a negative value for those listening on the podcast, what that's doing is the center of the frame, it's actually blowing it up and expanding it. And it's expanding all the pixels and changing the distortion. And it's extending, uh, it's expanding the sides and the edges a little bit, but it's it's expanding the uh, the middle of the frame a lot faster so that it's stretching it and making it look really funky. We go to the positive value and now the center of the frame is back to original. If I double tap on that, it'll go back to zero. Okay, we're going to the positive value. You see if it leaves the center of the frame alone and then the edges, the edges it's actually stretching. So we can actually stretch this right out. And apart from, <laughs> you see there on the bottom there, we the word Struman, you can see we have some chromatic aberration. That's a optic thing with the lenses, that type of lens, so you can't avoid that. But you can see the rest of it, we've actually ex stretched and if you could actually turn this into a usable photo. All right, I'll bring up another example, another photo now. Okay, so this is the same plant behind, sitting behind me and this is using a cheap uh, wide angle lens. And you've seen these you, at a lot of checkouts at even a professional camera retail store, they'll have the opportunistic wide angle lens kit or, or smartphone uh, clip on lens kit. And this is what happens when you have those cheap lenses is you'll have that distortion, you'll have the soft edges and that sort of thing. So let's go into the same thing. We'll go into the positive stretch there and we actually have some straight lines here as a reference. And you can see as I'm going further and further, we can see that is relatively straight. Put our finger on this on the screen we can, and hold it there. We can see there's the before, there's the after. Uh, and that's 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 pretty good. It's a pretty average photo, but that's pretty good. Now there is another option inside this app called Four Points. So we go into there, and this is an in-app purchase. And when we open that up and import, we now have a few extra options here. Uh, yes, no, don't worry about that. Where well, you can actually stretch, and this is similar to Snapseed inside their perspective tool, uh, and uh, it's called Free. So it's free form. So that's what this Four Points is. Now my recommendation is for most of distortion issues, angle distortion and that sort of thing is, is to use Snapseed. But if you need to remove that barrel or pin cushion distortion, this app is the way to go. Um, you just can't quite do that in Snapseed. And with this one, just to show you quickly, we can grab these corners and we can stretch these corners and do what we need to do to try and, there we go, you can get pretty funky pretty quickly, but you get the gist of it there. So you can actually stretch the corners individually and and uh, do a, have a little bit more control there, but Snapseed is, is another great option. So just to recap, five most common distortions are barrel distortion, pin cushion, lens type distortion, perspective distortion being subject distance, and the other one, perspective distortion being the angle. So the last two are a capture technique. Like I said, it can actually be an unintentional thing that you need to fix or it can be a creative thing. So this is a great, uh, great technique to get you out of your creative rut. So if you wanna get yourself out of your creative rut, I have another option here, the 14 day photo creativity challenge. It's, a, it's project based learning for 14 days. I share different techniques like this and you can go in it and get out there and practice it and uh, discover or, or, or get your creativity back on. Because <laughs> I know for myself, creativity was something that I really struggled with. So that's a great way. So smartphonephotographytraining.com forward slash PCC for photo creativity challenge. That makes sense, doesn't it? So thank you for joining me and I will catch you next time. Bye-bye.